greatest three weeks in all of sports are finally complete. March Madness is in the books for the year 2018. And in advance, I want to apologize to everybody because normally this isn't the normal camera quality that you see. Because I normally have been using a webcam lately. This one to be exact. But lately, I am just not sure what's been going on with it. Every time I've tried to hook it up and tried to make a recording, the voice I had, it would cause a crack on the microphone. Like the voice would carry over. And that was a problem before because somebody had brought it to my attention back in January. And I thought I had that fixed. In fact, I did have it fixed for a while. But then about a week about a week or two ago, maybe a week and a half ago, I noticed that problem again. I'm trying to figure out what the problem was and how I fixed it the first time because I just can't remember. But I promise I'll try to get it fixed as soon as I can. But until now, this is what the camera quality is going to look like. And I apologize for that. So right now, let's get into my March Madness recap and reaction. So I've got a lot of things to talk about here. There's so many unanswered questions. There's so many what ifs still. And even I'm, gonna, I'm even going to ask the what if questions in a little bit. But don't answer them like they're obvious, because in reality, they're not. And I do have facts, and I have some opinions to back them up. So enjoy the next, maybe about the next eight to nine minutes. I promise it'll be worth it. So let's recap this tournament. First off, Villanova has pulled it off. In fact, they ended my they ended my losing streak. I've done a bracket every year since I was in the fifth grade. And every single year, I have not picked a correct national champion until this year. Villanova finally came through for me. Now, I would go and recap all those picks I had, but I can't remember all of them. I remember at least maybe about maybe seven of them. I'll put it in the I'll put it in the comments section. But we'll and you can see it there. So let's just recap this whole tournament. Now was this the best tournament that we've ever seen? Ever. Is this the best tournament that we've seen in a while? Was this tournament better than last year's tournament? Yes, yes, and yes. Now, I have not watched a lot of NCAA tournaments. I've just watched them ever since I was maybe in about the fifth grade. But just the older that I have gotten, the more of the tournament that I've actually watched and invested my time in. Now, even though I would just watch a lot of highlights on the YouTube page, on NCAA March, the NCAA March Madness YouTube page, I still watch a lot of the highlights. And March Madness is an exciting time. In fact, the greatest three weeks in all sports. Now that it's finally over. There's just nothing to fall back on right now. We do have the NBA playoffs coming up with the NHL playoffs coming up. So if you're a loyal subscriber of mine, be sure to stay tuned for that. In fact, put, put your notifications on for me. Turn on my notifications. That way you can get them immediately. But there's so many unanswered questions here. The first unanswered question there is, did the committee kind of overseed and underseed some of these teams? The answer to that question, for me at least, is yes. I feel like several of these teams, they were either overseeded or underseeded. I said back in my bracket prediction video, I said Villanova should be the number one overall seed because they've been the most consistent team in college basketball this year. In fact, they're the most complete team, the most consistent team, and that's why they should have been the favorite. And that's why they were the favorite, despite not being the number one overall seed. And Virginia proved that they shouldn't have been the number one overall seed by completely laying an egg against UMBC, a 16th seed. Would Villanova have lost by 20 to UMBC? Absolutely not. Villanova probably would have beaten UMBC. They wouldn't have destroyed him, but they wouldn't have lost by 20. So let's just... And was UMBC... Speaking of UMBC, was UMBC underseeded? I think they were. I think UMBC, they play like that 15th seed that could beat a Duke or a Michigan State in that first round that would catch everybody off guard. Because as you notice, that when we see all these upsets, there were so many upsets filled in that first round alone. We had Arizona lose in round one. We had Wichita State lose in round one. Virginia lose in round one. And we had several teams have some close scares. We had Texas Tech have a close series against Stephen F. Austin. 
because so many teams, there's always that nerve a little bit. There's always those jitters, and everyone's all antsy. That's why the games in the first round are always closer than what they are in later rounds. But the reason why Villanova won was complete domination. And I think Villanova is one of the most, this year's Villanova team could and probably should go down as one of the most dominant teams in men's college basketball history. Probably at least the top five, maybe even top three. And going back to my statement on were teams underseeded or overseeded, I still want to know why Oklahoma got in. And you can't even reason why Oklahoma got in other than for Trey Young. In fact, speaking of Trey Young and everything like that, let's go over the NBA prospects we, that we were all hyped to watch. Trey Young for Oklahoma, Aiton for Arizona, Bridges for Michigan State, Marvin Bagley for Duke. And what did we notice about Trey Young, Aiton, and Bridges Michigan State? They all were eliminated in that first weekend. They didn't make it to the Sweet 16. They were all eliminated early. And this is why teams that win championships, with the exception of that Kentucky team, well, there was a couple of freshmen, there were a couple of sophomores on that Kentucky team. That's why you don't see the young players win the whole tournament. Experience is what pays off. Villanova had the experience. North Carolina had the experience last year. Villanova had the experience in 2016. Duke, they had the experience in 2015. And it just goes on down the list. The teams that win are teams that have junior and senior leadership. Occasionally sophomore leadership. So that's why we always see teams with senior leadership, junior, senior leadership, occasional sophomore leadership, make it pretty far in the tournament, even winning it all. Now, back, let's backtrack a little bit to teams being underseeded. I felt like Loyola, based on the way they played, making their run to the Final Four, even though I think they got lucky in two of their games, they honestly played the whole tournament. Like they were a ninth or an eighth seed. They didn't play like eleven seed like an eleven seed at all. Michigan, I think they were overseeded. I think they should have been a fourth seed, maybe even a fifth seed at the very worst. Because Michigan, they were lucky to get to where they were, or where they ended up in. They were lucky to get to the championship game. Because if you just look at the teams they played, they were they didn't play a single top five seed on the way to the championship game. And what happens when they played a real team? They got whooped. They just got beaten. They got beaten bad. That's what happens. They played a real team. Villanova brought Michigan back to reality. Although I can't discredit what Michigan did, I think they got lucky. And that's going to lead in to my next part as soon as we get done with this one. I think I think if we reseeded this tournament, would Loyola still be an 11 seed? Would Michigan be a 3 seed? Would Villanova be the number one overall seed? Or, I trash that. Would Virginia still be number one overall seed? If we were to redo this all over again, what would we do to change it? Like, what if we just redid everything and call it April Redemption? What would the seeds look like? That's being interesting to know. That's almost a what if question. That's leading into the next segment. What if? There's still some unanswered questions. And I wish I could travel to an alternate universe where the following hap where the following happened. These next what if questions can only be answered in an alter in an alternate universe, unfortunately. What if Loyola misses that game winning shot against Miami? Who makes that final four out of that group? Does Tennessee make it? Does Nevada make it? Does Kansas State make it? That's something I'm interested in finding out, or I wish that I would know. Or even, does Miami make a surprise run? What would have happened? What if Houston would have made their free throws against Michigan in that second round game? Who would have represented, who would have played against Villanova in that championship game? Would it have been Loyola? 
Would it have been Florida State? Would it have been would it have been Texas A and M? That's something I'm interested in finding out. Would it have been Kansas? Would it have been Kansas State, or would it have been? That's just something I'm interested in finding out. What would have happened if Grace and Allen shot went in the Elite Eight, and Duke was able to beat Kansas? Would Duke be able to beat Villanova? Because Villanova did dominate against Kansas, so would would Duke have been able to challenge Villanova? Would they have beaten them? Another thing that'd be interested to think about. What if Isaac Haas never went down for Purdue in the first round? Could Purdue have made a run to the Final Four? Could they have challenged Villanova? Could they have beaten Texas Tech? Again, another interesting to find out. So, still, there's so many what ifs. What if Davidson didn't win their conference tournament? Notre Dame would have gotten in. Would they have won a game or two? Would they have done what Syracuse did, make it the Sweet 16? Again, another interesting question to ask yourself. So my final thoughts on this NCAA tournament. I think it was the best tournament that I've seen in a while. Maybe maybe not necessarily ever not willing to maybe not willing to say that yet. At least maybe it's the one that I've ever seen. Maybe not you, but at least for me it was. A final rating for this tournament. I would say 9.95. I just feel like it wasn't a perfect 10. There was still probably some things that could have gone differently or things that should have gone differently. But it wasn't a perfect 10, but it was close to perfect. If one or two different things would have happened, it would have been a perfect 10. Anyway, comment your thoughts on the tournament. And also, is there any what-if questions that you wondered? Out of my four or five what-if questions that I had, do you have another what-if question if things would have gone differently? Like, for example, maybe like maybe what if UMBC would have beaten Kansas State? Could they have made a run? Could they have... Because they would have played Kentucky. Could they have competed against Kentucky? That's what I... That could be something you want to know as well. Like, that's just an example, but seriously comment if you have a what-if question. Because there's so many what-if questions. There's so many unanswered questions to March Madness. This may have been the greatest tournament we've seen in a while. This may have been the greatest tournament I've ever seen. But there's still unanswered questions. It's always the what-ifs. Anyway, like and share the channel. Share with your friends and family. I will see you next time. Have a wonderful day, guys.